I come to Bay Ridge, I think of City Kids. It's um, my first introduction to Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. It was coming late 1980 to come see a band that a friend of mine told me I, um, I should really look into. Well, the City Kids themselves, at the time they were doing it, were really at a, at a, at a time where it looked like they might, might go professional. And I think that they were trying to do the most popular cover songs at the time, while they were starting to mix their own original music also into the set. <laughs> many talented bands that, that come very close and really by the luck of the drawer just, just don't hit it and that, in my opinion that's pretty much the case with the City Kids. Certainly had the talent, certainly had very good uh, original songs and there's no mathematical reason why they didn't make it, it just didn't happen for them unfortunately. listening to Mike Riddle and the City Kids. Jack Whitman, uh, Michael, Annie, well the, well, the best musicians in the neighborhood. So growing up, everybody kind of wanted to be like that. Really, that was just a way of life then. Now it just brings back very good memories and the people come back together. It's a, it's a good thing and you realize that they don't have this kind of stuff anymore. It's not, it's not the same. It's not the same kind of venue anymore out there, and there's not that kind of closeness where everybody comes all the time uh, at the same to see the same bands. It's different. It's it's lost a lot. We're gonna play two tunes here. We're gonna let everybody go home. Thanks for uh, sticking it out with us. Brought up a child from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, kind of. It's the name. It's it's Mike Riddle, really. Um, he still plays out in the area here with the club circuit and uh, in a band called Prodigal Child. But it's not the same as City Kids. I don't quite look 30 years younger, but I feel 30 years younger. <laughs> when I get up there and play with Mike and Janet and um, of course, we're missing the original drummer, Michelangelo. Um, but I'm sure he's rocking wherever he is. What stands out for me when Michael was in the City Kids is all the different bands that was created by, there were three City Kids. The first one being with Anne, the second one being with Tor, and the third one being with Vince. Each one was a different band in its own, but the music was intense in all three. You know, the, the first band, had that band continued, to me that could have been like a, just a great band of entertainers. I'm sure we would have gotten bigger on the Jersey Shore because that's what that band was really built for. Jack was not one really to be that psyched on originals because I, and I understand why, you know, in front of a, of a typical club audience, you know, his, his feeling would be that we would start to lose the crowd, which, you know, you do, but how else are you going to get a record deal unless you're playing original? I mean, we're in Brooklyn here. Jersey Shore is an hour away. Uh, and that was a huge scene, too. So the bands that played this area, Brooklyn, Queens, in the summertime would go to Jersey and play to crowds on the beach of 5,000 people. I 
I've been around music a long time just like them, and I've seen Bruce Springsteen 15 times, and I've seen you two 10 times. I've seen Clapton, I've seen Elvis Costello, you name them, I've seen them all. But I gotta be honest with you, there's nothing like seeing a band walk into a club like a club in New Jersey, that's a local club, where this band from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn walks in and is probably taking a slot from one of those local bands from that neighborhood. And they have to face that hostile crowd and they have to win them over. And with within the first song, with their musicianship and their professionalism, they can win a crowd over. I think the third band with the three-piece band, I don't think we ever really understood how good it could be until we tried it. You know, I always thought that somehow by stripping things away, it kind of highlighted the abilities of the people in the band more. just uh, my husband and I would go out and just have a ball and I was doing what I loved and I did it for a living for a couple of years and it was a great crowd always and great people to play with and Mike's just awesome and then I got pregnant and I left <laughs> so came back for a little while afterwards just to fill in but that was pretty much it and I miss it. So we're standing outside the cove. Weasel! <laughs> <laughs> Let us in. <laughs> That's where we used to load in. Weasel's no longer with us. Next thing you know, I'm playing in the cold with my band, opening for these guys, which was amazing. You know what I mean? And then slowly, there was a lot of great bands that came through Bay Ridge. But these guys were just like the best of the best in Bay Ridge. Bay Ridge is probably the best kept secret in Brooklyn. I think that uh, so many people don't realize how beautiful Bay Ridge is. Well, it has changed a lot, but when I come and see some of the, so many of the people that I saw back in the 80s, it's a very warm family feeling. It's, it feels like, it's, sometimes it feels like you never left. Bay Ridge is the best neighborhood in New York City, by far. It's the nicest, I don't care what anybody says. Queens, Park, Slope, they got nothing on Bay Ridge. You know what I mean? It's the best of both worlds. It's not, it's not like living in the country and it's not like living in the city. You know, you're looking at these faces and you haven't seen them in some of them in 30 years, but then you start talking and it's just home, you know? It's just a good, very warm feeling. Bay Ridge is the bomb, and anybody, everybody knows that. Unless you have a few million zillion dollars and you live in Manhattan on Park Avenue. But if not for Park Avenue, Bay Ridge is the shit. When we played at the Cove, it was, we were on top of the world. I mean, there was no doubt in my mind, I was in my early 20s, that I wouldn't be rich and famous. That's just the way it was. I started doing the sound, then I added the lights, then I played keyboard from the soundboard, then I sang from the soundboard, and I finally went on stage. I remember one time when I was in City Kids in the, in the mid-80s, there was um, a festival, and their festivals go for blocks and blocks, they're outside festivals. We had played St. Francis College and Princeton Friday, Saturday, and then we were playing the 3rd Avenue Festival. And as far as I could see, in every direction, including the rooftops, out their windows, everybody was there to see us. And I just thought, it's like the Rolling Stones. We made it, but we didn't. At that time,
time I thought we were really gonna make it. And uh, my husband, nobody plays guitar better than my husband. He was the white tornado. I think what happened is, you know, you, you got to be lucky. Um, you got to stay together. The band changed. The, the, you know, it changed. The first band was never going to have a record deal, so forget that. Uh, the second or third band could have, but you know, the second band didn't last long enough. The third band, you know, by the time we d we did that band, I don't I, maybe that lasted a year and a half, but we had already been at this for five five years or so. Uh, you know, I think everybody was getting just very worn out Burnt from out. doing it. My dear, dear friends, come on, everybody, give me a, give me a huge applause. We got the city kids in the house. Come on. <laughs> doing it because you feel like you can't stop doing it because what happens when you stop doing it you die you know you, you start doing this rock thing in your 50s what's next